Hello, this video is a bit different because I'm doing a portfolio video. I made this portfolio back in January and it's what I used when doing all my interviews for university and it was successful. I got places at all the universities I interviewed at so I thought it'd be interesting for you to see what my portfolio looked like and I'm going to try and give a bit of advice as well. I was hoping to make this video at a more appropriate time but to be honest who knows when things are going to get back to normal so I figured I might as well make it whilst I've got the time. I was applying for an illustration course. It was important that I included a lot of illustration in my portfolio so I'm just going to talk about the thought process behind why I've included everything I have. I thought I'd start off because it is an illustration course with illustrations and this is all digital to keep it all organised. I thought I'd put all my digital pieces which I'm most proud of on the front page. Moving on now to some painting that I did in foundation, some abstract painting because I wanted to make sure that I included a variety of work from not only foundation but also A levels show a wide variety of the work I've done as well as some painting and some graphic design. Even though I am applying for an illustration course I wanted to make sure that I sh showed that you know I'm versatile and I can do a few things, bits and bobs here and there. This is another piece I did in foundation. The way I organised it was by putting things in clumps of when I did them so this is like a little clump of foundation stuff so the paintings was foundation this is foundation and I wanted to include this because it's a lot different to everything else that I've done because it was a landscape with buildings and that's like I don't really do that a lot so I thought I'd include it just to show that I can do it and now I'm moving on to a clump of fine art stuff so I've just shown foundation and now I'm going back to A levels when I did fine art I wanted to show how I can do realism as well, like a wide range of media. So I've shown digital work, I've shown like Photoshop and um, Illustrator, and I've shown paintings, and now I'm showing um, biro pen and charcoal stuff. I'm moving on now to painting because I did a bunch of paintings and I still really do enjoy painting, so I wanted to make sure that it was shown in my portfolio. And now I've just got a clump of paintings. Here's just one I did in A levels of my dad. On a bench <laughs> and here's another one from a levels again a much bigger one this time and just to make it easier for the people interviewing me I stuck a photo of the painting on the outside of it so they didn't have to fold it out if they didn't want to now this next painting actually wasn't in my portfolio it's just there as a placeholder because the actual painting uh, I don't have at the moment it was a portrait I did of myself here it is uh, I included this because it was one of the most recent things I've painted it was more up-to-date because the a-level stuff was quite old so I wanted to just show them how I've improved and how I kind of combining like abstract painting and portraiture together. It was showing them what I was currently interested in rather than a painting which was ooh, nearly a year old. Now this next piece was something that I did in A-level graphics and I included it because it shows some animation, all the frames of an animation that I did and um, in some of my interviews if the person was interested I showed them the animation on my phone so they could watch it as well as a little comic that I made inspired by the peanuts animations and comic strips. That last page was some more graphics works and then the next couple pages are also from graphics. This is a mind map. I included this because it's good to show your thought process and the the stages which lead up to a final piece so they like to see uh, sketchbooks and the initial concept and ideas and how they all grow into a bigger idea so I included this just to show my mind map and all my ideas and I also think it's uh, I like the way I decorated I think it looks pretty cute that's why I included that next I included this page to show the step by steps of how I created a final illustration this is some pages from my graphics book which I just ripped out and stuck on this sheet. The last couple pages as well were just from my graphics book and this is showing how I made a children's book called The Train to Snoozeville and this is just the process behind how I came up with um, the colours and the step by steps of how I made it. This is a poster, this is a bit different and that's why I included it because it is so different from my other stuff. This, I made the headpiece on a head, this was my final piece for graphics, so I made the, the big paper sculpture on a head and I did all the typography and the photography for it. So by including this it was showing a bit of my photoshop skills as well as uh, that I can make sculptures and do a bit of 3D stuff as well. The Train to Snoozeville. This is the book I was talking about earlier and well, you could see the pages 
and the process which led up to the creation of this book. I thought it'd be nice just for them to see a good hefty chunk of illustration because of course I'm applying for an illustration course so I wanted to make sure the majority of this portfolio was illustration stuff. As well as having sheets of work in my portfolio, I also included a few books. I have this which is my graphics book from A-Level, I also included my foundation book and a sketchbook that I just use in my free time. This book right here, I'm just giving you a brief little quick flick through of it. If you want a more in-depth flip through of this book, you can watch my A-Level graphics video on my channel, you can find that. You can also find one with all my A-Level fine artwork as well. The reason I included this is because the poster I showed you a second ago, uh, that was the final piece to the project inside this book. I included it just to show how I started from a little idea about paper and recycling and how that developed into the poster. But along the way in this book, it includes a lot of illustration because for the majority of the project I was doing quite illustrative stuff. It was only at the end of the project where I decided to go in a completely different direction and make a sculpture out of paper. So yeah, I just included that because it's got a bunch of illustration and it's also showing the thought process behind the poster. Now this next book, unfortunately I don't have it with me, it's a laptop inside college. I managed to find some footage which I filmed for my Instagram story of the book, unfortunately it's the only video I have of the book so it's a bit shaky, it's not the best quality but it will have to do, hopefully you can forgive me for that. The reason I included it in my portfolio was because it showed the process of the illustration I showed you at the beginning with the like the futuristic buildings, it showed all the steps which led up to that and it shows all the steps which led up to my abstract paintings as well. Uh, and then towards the end of the book it also had a whole project which was based around illustration as well. I am aware that I probably did take a little bit too much to my interviews uh, with the whole all the sheets and then I took three books with me but you know what, I'd rather have too much than too little. I'd rather be overprepared than regret not showing them something. In the future I do plan on making a video showing all my foundation stuff, it's just waiting for when I'll be able to go back into college to collect my stuff. This is a project I was talking about which is all illustration based. I did it based on the Australian bushfires, so I ended up doing a final piece illustration about the uh, a little koala trapped in a tree and getting saved from the fires and it was all to promote a charity and again the only footage I have of this final piece is on my Instagram so you'll have to excuse that but here's the final piece that I made for that which was in my portfolio and I think it's very cute. I had only just completed this project when I was doing my interviews so I thought it was nice for them to see what I was currently working on rather than just work from the past. I was nearly done I included in my portfolio this little sketchbook which is my, my own personal sketchbook which I use in my free time. I included it just to show what I do draw in my free time and what I'm interested in without it having to be related to college or foundation. Let them know, hey, I'm pretty serious about art because not only do I do it for college and you know foundation, I also do it just for fun and uh, you know it genuinely is just my hobby which I enjoy doing. Uh, Alright so I thought to finish this video off I would attempt to do uh, give you a bit of advice and just break everything that I've been talking about in this video down into some tips. I would just also like to put it out there that my teachers helped me a lot to make this portfolio, they were really helpful. I'm only going to give you the advice that they've given me. If you just so happen to be making a portfolio to apply to university, hopefully this helps. Okay, so here I go. These are some tips which I learned when making my own portfolio. So I'm going to start with what to include. First off, make sure you include a variety of pieces with media to show that you're willing to try new things and you, you like experimenting and you, you're not boxing yourself in. And also show a range of subjects, so not just portraits. You may do portraits and landscapes and a, and a mix, of, mix of a bunch of different things. Also, you want to make sure you include not just final pieces, you want to make sure you've got the work which leads up to final pieces so good things to include are your books because it shows the project development from beginning to end and how ideas grow. And next up on the list, presentation, how to present to your portfolio. First off, I mean this goes without saying, make sure it's neat, make sure it's tidy. Make sure it's easy to get to when you're at your interview, you're not messing about trying to open bags or messing about with your sheets and they're all in uh, the wrong order. So make sure when you're going into your interview it's all easy to get to and it's all in order already. So you know what's coming next and you're ready to talk 
about it and make sure it all also like flows nicely into each other. Like in my portfolio I had all my paintings in one section, I had my graphics work in one section and I had my foundation work in a section. Another one is don't worry about going out and buying a fancy book to display all your work in. Obviously make sure it's neat but at the same time you don't have to go and buy something fancy because majority of people when I was at interviews had the exact same plastic folder that I had to show my work on so it's not held against you. But of course if you already have a fancy folder you might as well use it. And then finally some tips for the interview. First off make sure you know what you're going to say about each piece so you're ready to, to talk about anything if they ask you about it. In some interviews they'll just ask you to talk you through the whole portfolio so make sure you've got a little bit to say about each page. Just be prepared, you could be asked what your favourite piece is so just have that in your head so you're ready to say that. And then in some interviews there might be quite a few pages that just get glossed over. That's a thing that happens as well. I had an interview where they looked at my portfolio without me and then I just got called back into the room and they just chatted to me without my portfolio in front of me. Um, so that's something that could happen as well. So there you go, that was the extent of my knowledge. I hope this video helped, because I know that making a portfolio can be quite a daunting task. Thank you very much for watching, I hope this helped, and goodbye!